Hi, I'm certainly glad you could join me today. You ready to do a fantastic painting? We're good. You can paint me by numbers. I don't come with set colors. You can paint me by numbers. I don't come with set colors. You can paint me by numbers. I don't come with set colors. Hi. My name is Ty Tanker, your guide to the universe, and I'd like to welcome you back to this, our series, The Joy of Painting on a Unicycle. If this is your first time joining us, I hope you'll feel inspired to grab your one wheel and your big easel, paint along with us. If you've been with us before, I'm certainly, certainly glad to have you back. Now, what I have here is 18 by 24 inch canvas covered in a little bit of liquid white. And that's very important to this technique because it makes the canvas slick and wet and allows us to blend color right up here instead of working to death there on the palette. Let's go ahead and do a little winter scene. It did snow here the other day, and though I wasn't happy to see it, I think you'll really enjoy this painting. So before we get on the unicycle, let's go ahead and grab our palette. You can see here, I've got all the colors, and I'm gonna run the names of these colors here across the screen so you can follow along with us at home. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this yellow ochre and some of the bright red. I do like that color. Well, doesn't that just look fantastic? You don't want to have too much of the bright red. It is very, very strong. It's going to take over. So we're going to mix a little more of the yellow ochre in there together before we get started. I think you'll really, really be happy. Happy with what we're painting today. So I'm going to sit down with my knife. We're going to mount our unicycle and get started. Now, for those of you who've watched my unicycle before, you may see me grab the seat from time to time. No, I'm not just saving my manhood. That is the special technique we unicyclists use to keep the unicycle directly under us so our center of gravity stays right where we want it. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna tap our brush in some of that color that we just mixed up. Just tap it. We really don't want too much color there on the canvas. We're gonna find our center here. We're gonna balance and we're gonna go ahead and start painting. All right, we're gonna do little crisscross strokes here on the canvas. That's right, we're gonna start in the middle and work outward. We're gonna get lighter and lighter and lighter as we work, work into that liquid white. Doesn't that look pretty? I think I'm gonna grab just a little bit more of that bright red. I'm gonna mix it in here. Oh, these winter scenes can be so cold and uncomfortable looking without a little bit of color. From there, we're going to wash our brush. Now we do use some odorless paint thinner to wash our brushes, and you do want it to be odorless, or you're going to be painting by yourself. I'm going to go ahead and shake that brush out here, and just beat the devil out of it. <laughs> All right, and we're going to dismount the unicycle, and we're going to mix up some color here. I'm going to go ahead and grab just a little bit of some bright blue Grab some bright blue and a little bit of black. A little bit of black. I'll darken up. I'm going to make a nice winter sky. Maybe a little bit of white. This isn't the saddest blue sky we've ever seen before. Now, is it? All right. I'm pretty happy with this color. When you're painting alone and you're making all the big decisions, you can decide exactly how you want your sky to look. We're gonna get back on the unicycle, find our balance, and then we're gonna start outward and work inward so we get the darker colors on the outside of the canvas. Perfect. Oh yeah, just work it around. Let that blue mix in together. Little crisscross strokes again. Still little crisscrosses. Come on back around here. Working ever so gently against the canvas. Okay, then right along the bottom. All right, now I wanna have some snow here on the bottom. So while I've got this color in my brush, I'm gonna dab just a little bit. Maybe a little bit more of the blue color, perfect. And right along the bottom, we're gonna take some long, long strokes to create the illusion of some shadows in with our snow. Find our center on the unicycle, here we go. 
Oh, we want to brighten that up a little bit. Let's grab some of the white. Perfect. Have a little more of the white. Perfect. Remember, there's no such thing as a mistake as much as there is a happy accident. So we got a little too much dark color down there in our snow, but it's no big deal at all. No big deal at all. You hold the power on this canvas. And you can make your world look however you like. Oh, isn't that pretty? Perfect. So I'm gonna wash that brush again. Isn't that just the most fun part of this whole project? All right, let's find a place to put this brush down. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and grab a large three inch brush that has already been cleaned and dried, and we're gonna just blend this whole thing together. Now this is two hairs and some air. You don't wanna press too hard on this canvas, and you don't wanna get too close to those colors, especially not bringing in those dark blues into your orange. You're gonna be an instant mud mixer. You're gonna be mad at me. Painting should make you happy, 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 happy. Bob Ross used to stress that a lot and I like to take that into just about everything that I do. Perfect, perfect. All right. We're gonna have some sun here on the canvas. So I'm gonna give us just a second here. We're gonna grab a little bit of the titanium white right there on our finger. Do some finger painting today. Doing things that really make you feel like a kid makes you happy. Happy, happy, happy. We'll make little circles here right on the canvas. The sun can be as bright or as dark, as big or as small as you want it to be. Gonna grab a little more and make that just a little bit brighter. Really press firmly into the canvas. You don't want a big glob of paint left over when you're done with this. Perfect. Now, you wanna grab one of your knives. And then we're gonna take some of the paint off the sun there. Ready? Oh man, perfect. Then grab your three inch brush and blend right over it. Perfect, we've got a nice, distant sun there. All right, now we're gonna grab a clean and dry one inch brush and we're gonna add some clouds up here. Happy little clouds make me happy. But first, we're gonna mix up some color. All right, here on the palette, we're gonna mix up some color for our clouds. We're gonna go ahead and grab some of this Lizarin Crimson. And the Thalo Blue. Thalo Blue is such a pretty color, but it is very strong. You don't want to use a lot of it with this. Let's grab a little white. And a nice dark lavender color. Isn't that pretty? All right. Now with just a little bit of paint on the brush, we're going to add some happy little clouds onto our painting. Happy little clouds make us happy, don't they? just dab them on there. The clouds are just about the freest things in nature. They can look about a million different ways. So we're just gonna dab them onto here with the lightest touch. And give them such a, a light, fluffy look. It's your world. You can bring it right across the sun if you like. And some more clouds up here. whistle there across the sun. However you like. We don't 
want to press too hard into the canvas here. You're going to ruin the illusion that this is a happy, fluffy little cloud. Perfect. Perfect. Now my specialty is as a mountain unicycler, so I decided to grab my old 26 inch mountain unicycle before we get ready to put some mountains in this here paint. Old oh, Bob Ross lived in Alaska and he loved to paint mountains, so I think we're going to try some of that today. Well, we're going to take some of this. We're going to take some of this light brown. We're going to take some of this dark brown. Mix them together. So we're going to drag that out nice and flat. And we're going to get a little roll of paint right on the end of our knife. There's a straight edge on our knife that makes it very easy to load. You can just take it. Very nice. Very, very nice. All right, back up onto the unicycle. Ooh, we're feeling much taller now. All right. And with just the flattest edge of our knife with that little roll of brown paint on there, we're gonna decide where the biggest peak in our mountain is. We're gonna start right here. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. You wanna press very hard with your knife, almost like you're trying to push that paint right through the fibers. Let's grab a little bit more of our paint, add ourselves another peak. Come out. Yep, right there, right there. It looks wonderful. If you've ever watched a Bob Ross painting tutorial, you know you, if you see the whole mountain, you want the top of the mountain to be thicker than the rest of it. Perfect. We're going to add just a couple more peaks here. Perfect. Looks just excellent. Let's bring that up a little bit higher. Oh, let's do one more. You have a tremendous amount of power with all this canvas. You've got to start making some big decisions, like how many peaks your mountain has in it, how far out it stretches. Now we're going to grab one of our clean, dry, one-inch brushes and we're just going to grab and drag the edges of the mountain now. We're going to create that illusion of mist down at the bottom of the mountain and this is just about the easiest way to do it. Oh, look at that. Just drag it out in one smooth line, remembering to follow the contours of this mountain that you've built. Excellent. Again, you want the top of the mountains to be more distinct than the rest of the mountain. And so by dragging out this color and allowing it to blend with some of that liquid white, it happens automatically. I think you're going to be really happy with this technique. Let's grab one of our cleaner knives off the edge here. And on the palette, we're just going to mix up some white. We're going to grab some of our dark blue and black. All right, that's going to be our shadow color. Let's clean off our knife. All right, now this is a very tough step. I'm not going to be moving around a whole lot on the unicycle, but we're going to add some snow onto our mountains. And this is one of my favorite techniques from the old Bob Ross. We're just going to grab some paint on the edge of our knife, just like that. And with the lightest, lightest touch you can ever imagine, you want to just grab and drag some of that paint. Just like that. Now one of the hardest things about this technique is having the lightest, lightest touch you can. So that that paint just breaks. Allows some of that mountain color to come through. Some of it to stay. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And now it's just a little more of that white. We're gonna bring it over and we're gonna get our next peak. And I think it's just gonna join the little bit of snow that came with the first one. 
Excellent, excellent. Okay, I'm going to do that to some of our other peaks. Grab a little bit more of your white. Just drag it along. Just the lightest, lightest touch. We'll add a little more white into that in a second. Perfect, perfect. All right, let's go ahead and, and clean off our knife. If you're enjoying watching the joy of painting on a unicycle, go ahead and take a second, go on over to the Universe Venmo and donate some money to help out those Camp Kesem kids. There's some information on my channel about exactly who we're helping and why it's so important. I'll catch you over there later. All right, let's go ahead and grab some of our shadow color here right on the edge of the knife. Little roll of paint, just like that. And then we're gonna follow the edge of the mountain that we created earlier with just a lightest touch, making sure to go opposite the direction of our highlight. Oh, isn't that pretty? Grab a little more paint. A little too much paint there. Perfect. With the other side of our knife, that's still got some paint on it. put our palette down for a second and we're gonna grab a clean dry one inch brush this guy that we used earlier make sure we're cleaned up here and just beat the devil out of your brush <laughs> all right and we're gonna reach up and we'll grab not from the top of the mountain but from some of these edges that drag out here we're just gonna reach and drag create that illusion oh that's perfect now isn't it be sure you don't ruin the shapes that you've just created. Oh, perfect, perfect. Clean it off before we drag some of the white out. Be sure to follow the contour that you just created. Oh, now doesn't that just look magnificent? <laughs> oh, just the way that Bob Ross wanted. Some happy, happy mountain. It's just that easy. You can do it. You can do anything. So far, we've created a sky fit for the Museum of Modern Art, and we've got a happy, happy little mountain sitting down below. Oh, doesn't that look precious? Looks like someplace I want to take my unicycle out as soon as it gets a little bit warmer. What we're going to do now is start deciding how the land looks a little bit closer to us in the picture. Right at the base of the mountain, we're going to add ourselves in a happy little footy hill. So we're going to take our shadow color from before, and we're going to add it into this white over here. Oh, doesn't that look fantastic? And you know what? Let's add in some of this cobalt blue. Cobalt blue is just a fabulous, beautiful little blue color. All right, set our knife down, and with a, ooh, let's go with a one-inch brush this time. I'm going to get on the unicycle, and we're going to decide where these little footy hills live. Again, you have a tremendous amount of power on this canvas, and it's time to start making some big decisions. All right, I'm going to grab a little bit of that footy hill color. 
to the brush. And we're going to start to set it down here. You gotta make big, big decisions. Like where does where do your foot heels live? Do they go up? Do they go down? Where do they live? Oh, doesn't that look great? I start to get the illusion that there's maybe a little forest, a bunch of little trees living down here. Perfect. With another brush, I'm going to grab. We're just going to start to pull down very gently, very, very gently. Allowing that color to just blend in with the liquid white that's already on the canvas. And then, with a very light touch, we're going to come and we're going to do some little upstrokes on creating the illusion that there's all those happy little trees living down there at the base of the mountain. Perfect, perfect. Now let's imagine, oh, there's another little footy hill closer to us. So with that brush that we just used, we can mix together a little bit of this lavender color. Maybe a little black. Oh, and with that, let's throw in a little bit of that alizarin crimson. Make a nice dark, almost violet color. But we really don't want much color in there at all. Maybe mix in some of this shadow color from before. All good. All good things. There's no such thing as a mistake, especially in mixing your paint. Happy little accidents. Every little paint, every little painting that you do is just going to look a little bit different with a little bit different color value. And that's just what makes this so amazing. So let's get up on the unicycle again and add our second row of foothills. All right. Drag those out, decide where they live. Little dabs, little dabs right on the painting. I'm gonna start to get a little bit lighter here as we get to the edge. And again, just take it, clean it off a little bit. And we're going to drag it down. I want it to maybe thin out a little bit. In just a second, we're going to bring some hills maybe over the top of that. And then, with just the slightest touch, bring that up a little bit. Make your land look however you want. It's your world. We're just looking at it. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, right now. Doesn't that look fantastic? Well, now let's start to get, let's start to play some games. Let's go and grab ourselves a little fan brush. Dipping in to some of the white that we made earlier. Not too much, not too much now. Just a little bit of white on the end of your fan brush. Perfect. We're going to start to make it look like there's a little bit of light that's just peeking through that little footy hill down at the bottom. So we're just going to tap that in here. Not too much, not too much. I'm not making a new color here on the canvas. Just maybe given the indication that happy old sun up at the top is just reaching through the clouds and 
shining its light down on this little part of the forest. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. And we're gonna mix together a little bit of white, some of this blue color that we've been working with. A lot more white. And then we're gonna grab this little brush here. Make sure it's nice and clean. I'm gonna dip it, dip it into this lighter color that we've made here. A little lot of paint under that brush. Get back up on your unicycle and we're gonna add in the little bunny heels. hopping just like a little rabbit right before we're gonna put them in so right here at the bottom we're just gonna find a spot and we're gonna start to drag it in drag it in right along the bottom of those little footy hills we made before and even if you pick up some of that color what you do is you end up bringing down some beautiful shadows it adds a little character of depth here into our painting and you can make your scene look however you like I'm gonna get a little more of that color a little more of that color because it just looks so darn fantastic here on the canvas. And maybe we bring in just a little more white. The other side might be a little bit brighter. And on the other side of our little footy hill, we're going to go ahead and, and bring that one in. <laughs> Bob Ross said this is where he would ski. He was not a particularly good skier right here. Me, I'm going to take my unicycle up into these mountains. <laughs> but I agree, I don't know how to ski much either. So I'm going to be skiing down here on the little bunny hill. Perfect. Hello again. If you're just joining us, we're just getting ready to put down some happy little trees into our painting. So I thought we'd come back on over to the canvas. Uh, let's grab some of that dark blue from before. Oh, a little bit of black. Let's grab some of that alizarin crimson. And some of this raw umber color. We want just a nice, thick, dark color here. All right, perfect. I'm sure to mix out some of that blue color. We really don't want this one to have so many different hues in it. All right, now you want to take your fan brush and really load up, load up with a lot of this color here. Load up, you really can't have too much. Lots and lots of color. Set that down. And I thought we'd introduce another one of my unicycles today. It's a little bit taller than the one that we've used for most of this project. But I thought we might need a little bit of a taller reach to get up to the top of those trees. All right, so we're gonna decide where we want some of these trees to live. Let's go ahead and start right down here. Old Bob used to call these Z trees. So you're just going back and forth across the canvas <laughs> like a little Zorro. <laughs> now, Bob used to say this was pretty easy, but he was not on a unicycle.
Ah, uh, let's imagine that this tree has a little friend. Let's grab some more of that color. And I think he lives right over here. Right over here is where that tree lives. I'm just going to blend that right into the back of the first tree that we made. Perfect. All right. And while we got that color on the brush, let's come on over to the other side of the painting. Load up on color again. And let's plant some trees on this side. Big, big tree. Bob always loved having big trees. Isn't that lovely? Oh, and I think he's got a friend that lives over here too. Might have a couple of them. Don't want to overdo it on color right here. I want to have some gaps so you can see through the branches of the trees. Let's have some fun with it. I like to imagine that this little tree, oh, when he was a baby, maybe a big old deer came by and stepped on him. Bent him a little bit. Nature's like that sometimes. It's nice to, to put a little bit of variety in your painting. It's terrible to think that every tree is just destined to be a future telephone pole. We don't like that. Or we don't. All right, how does that look? I'm gonna show you Bob's secret for making a tree look like it was just floating off in the distance. And with our knife, we're gonna bring in some white into this lavender color that we made before. bit more crimson a little more of the light Ooh. Well, doesn't that look pretty now uh, let's bring in some of the dark blue oh that's black we brought in a little bit of black let's take this let's just move it off to the side all right now let's load up our fan brush and get back on our unicycle. Try to forget about the heat being on in your house. All right, Bob's secret was just to go ahead and take a little fan brush and a much lighter color than you use for the trees. Really load that up with color. And it's just that easy to go ahead and throw some, some trees back here in the distance. <laughs> it's just that easy. Right, let's maybe bring some, some little distant trees right in here. Don't want you to worry too much about how much of the color we're bringing in here. I'll show you why in just a second. All right. Let's go ahead and clean off our brush. I'm going to give some of these trees some trunks now. How about that? So over here, we're going to mix together some of our dark brown.
and a little bit of white. Maybe have some of that burnt umber color in there. Dark colors are very hard to mix together with the lighter colors. All right, so just get a little roll of paint right on the edge of your knife, just like that. Get on your unicycle. And we're just gonna scratch in a couple little trunks here. Now we just want to have a faint indication of a trunk being there. You can't see the whole trunk from a tree on the outside and that's just the way we're gonna do it here. Oh, let's give this guy a trunk too. Perfect. Let's grab another roll of paint. <laughs> and we're gonna give these guys a trunk over here. <laughs> they get mad if we don't give them one. I mean, these are happy little trees. And ain't that just the whole point in life? Is to be happy. Remember, you can't see the whole trunk inside the tree. So just here and there, and there and here. Add yourself a little trunk. It's just that easy. Maybe just a little more for that last tree. And then take the back of your knife and just scratch in the faintest indication of some dead limbs. <laughs> Old pines got tons of dead limbs. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Get off your unicycle and grab your palette. Make sure you cleaned off your fan brush and then you're gonna grab just a bunch of white here on the edge of your fan brush. Let's turn that around so we can grab some more in a second. And go ahead and mount your unicycle. Start giving it a little bit of a hop. We're gonna add some snow onto these trees. And the thing about snow is we just don't know where it's going to go. Just like we don't know where we're going to go on our unicycle. So with a couple of hops, we're just going to start adding in some snow. Add in some snow. Remember, here's your light source. So you want most of the snow to be on this side of the tree. As we come down the tree, that snow is just going to get naturally darker and darker and darker. Go ahead and bring some snow on over into this tree. Get darker, darker, darker as so we get to the bottom of the tree. Let's get a little more white. And come on over here. We're going to add some snow onto this boy here. some of this really thin white that we did before. One of Bob's secrets was that thin paint sticks very well onto a thick paint. We have very thick paint up in these trees here. Remember where our light source is. just about right. Take a second to admire your painting. 
This painting's supposed to make you happy. We do have one more brush that hasn't been used yet. So I think we're gonna go ahead and add some water. Add some water into our painting. So with a dry two inch brush, we're gonna take oh, some of this blue color that we made before. Decide where you want your water to be. Oh, let's put it right, right about here. Yeah, that's a big decision that you can make on your painting, or in any painting. Just take, drag it straight down, and oh, what do you say? We just bring that right to the edge of the painting. It adds the illusion of some water. Blend that together. Oh, it lifts up our canvas just a bit. And get the bottom, right to the bottom of the canvas. It's just that easy to add some water into your painting. Just that easy. And maybe on the water's edge, there's a little rock. Let's go on back to our, let's go on back to our colors here. I'm gonna grab a little, little white, a little black, mix them together here. You add a little bit more white. And once you're happy with the color that you've created, grab it. Come on back to our water source. Up on your unicycle, and let's just say that old little rock lives right here. That's right, a little rock. And maybe he's got a friend. He's got another rock that lives right here. Let's call him Tom. Tom the Rock. That's right on the edge of our water. Isn't that beautiful? And let's go back to our fan brush, grab a little bit of the white. I want to show you how easy it is to add a little bit of snow to Tom. Come right over the top. Just that easy. And maybe we add a little bit of, a little bit of that snow color right into the water here. Perfect, perfect. All right, we're just about out of time here, but let's go ahead and we're gonna blend some of these colors together from the tree. All right, so we can't tell where the trees end. And I'm gonna drag some of that color out. I'm gonna bring some shadows out into the edge of the painting. Same thing over here. Blend that in with the snow. You can do it. It's just that easy. Hi, I've got a special way that I want to go ahead and sign this painting. Remember, this has been your explorer of the universe, Ty Tanker. <laughs> and from all of us here at the studio, I'd like to wish you happy painting and God bless.